Okay, um, been working like crazy the last couple of weeks. Um, at home, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning on the CAD program and um, building a, actually what I'm doing is building a safety valve. Now, um, about 30 plus years ago, when I, well actually 69 when I started, we used to have those big Kunkel valves. That was all that was available. And I had them on my little engine specific, you know, and they worked great. I mean, they looked like, you know, sound like the space shuttle going off. You know, and they work great. And people still use them. And uh, they're hard to get now, the number one figure one. I've got about a dozen, and uh, I'm holding on to them. But uh, I always wanted to make a miniature safety valve. And then the ones that were available... Uh, Railroad Supply had one one time, and then the Bagley safety valve, and some of these others, they kind of worked, but uh, I wasn't really pleased with the way they operated, and I thought, well, maybe I could uh, make one myself, and I had plans for it, because you got to remember, I was 30, less than 30 years old, 28, 29 years old at the time, and had a lot of things going on in my life, and uh, never really got the opportunity to do it. Um, I had heard uh, through a friend, Stanley Robinson, who frequently flew, flew to uh, LALS, that someone out there, I didn't know at the time, uh, Barry Haig, but the uh, super scale, he made a safety valve. And uh, my very first trip out there in 1980, uh, I met Barry, and uh, I tried her prior to that, uh, hadn't met him prior to that, several years before that. And uh, Barry and, and, and Jim Kreider are friends, and uh, they introduced me, we hung out together and whatnot, and I bought some safety valves from, from Barry and uh, brought them back to the East Coast, and I believe I was probably the first one ever to bring them back here. And I put them on my Pacific, and they're still on that engine, uh, owned by John Forsyth, a PLS member. But uh, always wanted to do it, never had the time, always got involved in other things, Mercer Locomotive Works and blah, 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 and building cars and this and that, and trucks and wheels and wheels and wheels and wheels. Well, now I have the time, and uh, I'm looking for something new to do and keep my mind occupied, so I decided to make a safety valve, and I calculated the springs, had a spring company wind the spring to my specifications and so on, and um, I designed up a safety valve. With, uh, the, the big secret to those safety valves and make them pop and work right really is the blowdown ring. That's the real heart of the thing, I think. But uh, I'm not using a ball. I have a real seat. I don't like the ball. The ball kind of gets suspended there. And uh, I don't know. It just doesn't work the same. Where the seat it acts like an umbrella. When the steam comes out, it holds that, holds that, it'll hold it down and then pop. And then it'll hold that up against the, there's a stop inside there. It holds it up there. It doesn't get that high. But anyway, it holds it up. And then the blowdown ring allows the pressure to drop, and as it comes down, boom, it just reseats a few pounds. Now this one here, I built, I built four, four prototypes. Now this is one, I'll show it up close. There it is. Got the, the square holes in it, like, good model is that a consolidated safety valve. But they're all pretty much the same internally. And a little bit different design. I uh, made one eighth pipe, and I made this piece is is part of the hex. This is all made. I cut that hex on there. It was a round piece of stock, and I put the thread on there. And you know, I could make that quarter inch if I wanted, and I probably could even put three eighths on there. But uh, I have no need to go that big. You can always put a bushing in it, and um, it doesn't have the ribs on it and everything. But I, I eliminate that because of a couple of reasons. One is it's a little more difficult to fabricate. This is actually a fabrication. It's two separate pieces, the top piece and the bottom piece, and then the third piece here. And it's soldered together. And uh, I'm giving away my secrets, the big deal. And anyway, if it's successful, I'm going to make a, a, a investment casting and work from that point. But so far, it's been working perfectly. And uh, all the other pieces are turned a little while back on the, uh, on the YouTube. I was showing that I made a long piece, I think it's in here, yeah, here it is, a long piece of uh, material um, 
this propeller shift actually, which is a tough naval bronze, which that's what I want it for, for strength. And um, uh, that's the blowdown ring. It's got 45 notches around here. And I had to remake it, believe it or not. I made a three quarter, not thinking that the threads on the body here are three quarter, 16, uh, three quarter 32. And you can't have the thing OD a three quarter because it's got to be smaller to pass through that. So I went to 11 16 and then I put the, redid the 45 cuts around there. Recalculated and everything, and we did the 45 cuts. And um, uh, I'm using a 32 thread there. I'm using a 32 thread between the body and here, three quarter 32. On the blowdown ring, I'm using half inch 32. And up here, I'm using 832. Now, I might make it, I might try to make it a little, I might make a couple in the future here with a little finer thread because you get a little bit more adjustment. I might go to either 36 and I might try even a 40. Up here, I'm going to use, I think, a 36 thread. I get a little bit more adjustment. It may not make that much difference, but it'd be curious, uh, interesting to know, to, to find out. Now, that's a, 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 a this, the, the blowdown ring set screw is a, uh, one, a, a, seven, a 172 screw. And I, it just goes right into the, it just fits it. It's got a point on it, and the, 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 the blowdown ring has 45 degree cuts in it, and it just fits right in that. And it holds it there so it doesn't turn. So, uh, so far it's been a success. Uh, I've got these all set now on air, but I got to come up with a different system to set them. Uh, maybe I could just roughly set them on air, and I'll find out Sunday when I test them on the boiler. I'm going to put them right on my locomotive and just set the, like I mentioned before, when we were firing the engine up, I'm going to put two ball valves. I got some nice small ball valves here I got. And uh, just put those in place of the safety valves. I put the safety valves on top of here, and then shut them off, so I can test one or the other. That does does make a difference. Um, and uh, I'm the, I'm finding out a lot of different things about them, uh, how to set them and so on, and what capacity. Uh, believe it or not, that air compressor won't pump against that one. It's pumping, so I have to shut it off and then let it drop. And then, and uh, so I'm going to come up with a. But I did notice that when I was testing them on air with the locomotive, and this is a separate, basically a separate tank, a storage tank, uh, as the as the pressure it would pop off, and as the pressure would drop, uh, and then three seat, and then the the air compressor tank would fill up the boiler again, pop and reseat. So if I have a small line feeding the secondary tank, it takes a little bit of delay to fill that tank. So that gives it a chance to build up slowly and pop again. So I might try that with a separate tank. But um, there's other ways to test them. You can hydro them. That only give you the pop-off pressure. Any kind of a dead weight gauge test will only give you pop-off pressure. So you got to test the, the blowdown ring under pressure. And um, uh, the screw here is a little bit long. I just made them. I made them different. One of them here is shorter. Works a little bit better. And... Um, I need the longer screw for a higher pressure because you got to push it down a little bit more. But I'm going to refine that later, make the nut, the jam nut a little bit thinner. By the way, I made these 3 16 hex and quarter inch hex so you have standard size screwdrivers, the, the, the uh, wrenches to tighten them up. Okay, well, I'm going to give it a, I'm going to bring in a close up in it. I'm going to turn the air compressor on and then I have to turn it off over here at the breaker. When it, reach, when it pops off, I turn the breaker off and then let it reseat down. So uh, I'll show you what that's all about and how that works, and then um, you can judge for yourself. I got the air compressor in the other room, so you don't hear the noise over the, on the video, but uh, let's see what happens. I really should put a pressure gauge on here. Now I've got them set at 120, and they reseat three pounds under. Some of them are a little bit more. Here she goes, it's going to pop down. It's starting to get popped. Shut it off. There it is. What do you want from me? And the best thing to way to test them is under steam. So, well, that's it uh, on the safety valve for now. Um, uh, I'm happy with it. Uh, it was a great fun making them. By the way, I'm going to make two different tops for these. 
they had a muffled one. I want to make a muffled style top that just goes over the top of this and, and uh, somehow attaches here. It's just a, a, a facade and a cover to make it look like a um, muffled valve. And uh, the Pensy had a much bigger head. They were like a, 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 I think the name of them was a Coles valve. And they had a bunch of series of drilled holes in there. So I'll make those heads up. It'd be about an inch and a quarter in iron. By the way, this is 15 16 937 and a half OD. That's what I made these. And um, I don't know how tall they are. They're a couple inches tall, inch and a quarter maybe. And uh, we'll find out how they work on steam come Sunday. I'll make a video and see what happens. So much for the safety valve at this point. Uh, it's been a real pleasure making them. Uh, had a lot of fun doing the parts and uh, come up with some really uh, ingenious ways to make the parts. Uh, and uh, now I got to make pr more production. I got to come up with an even uh, more of an idea on how to make make the parts uh, in production. So I want to do probably 100, 150, 200 of them at a time. Um, okay, that's it for now. I know you enjoy my videos, and I want. By the way, I want to thank everybody for the nice emails and uh, comments I get on my YouTube's, and um, I enjoy making them in the Chasky. C H A S K I dot com. Uh, anybody wants to see more about live steam trains? C H A S K I Chasky dot com, and uh, you'll find me on there and a lot of others, and a lot of knowledgeable people. And I enjoy it. I've been on it for eight years now. I enjoy talking with the fellows, and I'm on air every day. Okay. See you on the next part. Thanks for watching.